in, in Kuwaiti society and, and culture. But for instance, if you look at uh, a lot of my friends are Amy, and um, those of my generation tend to identify much as Arabs. But their parents, their grandfathers, I've asked them to ask them, and then when asked whether they consider themselves more Arab or Persian, they tend to say more Persian than Arab. But, but they, they're fully Kuwaiti. They're, they're, it, it'd be foolish to say that because they identify as Persian, they're not Kuwaiti. They're an integral part of what Kuwait is. And um, I feel like a lot of this, this discussion about, about, about Kuwait tends to focus on this Arab nomadic uh, portion of Kuwaiti heritage. And I think it, it's, it's important to remember that Kuwait has always been more of a crossroads of many different cultures, a crossroads between the Arab, Persian, and Indian culture. Then the majority of our cuisine is Indian-based. Yeah, and their numeric system. Yeah. So, so uh, Kuwait, Kuwait is a maritime culture. It's not a desert culture. It has some components of a desert culture, and most tribes originally come from Arabia or Iraq, but it is a maritime culture. I think there's yeah, another one. Maritime. And maritime cultures are always open. It's a port, so you're always open, so people come from Iran, really from Iran or, or Iraq. So Kuwait is Arab by virtue of having the Arabic language and by virtue of having well, most mean, of the population originally from Arab tribes. So, but it is not, it is not mono-ethnic. It is a it is a multi-ethnic society in which we were open to many different, including Christians, including Jews, including Persians, including Arabs, not Indians, but that's more in Asia. But it is not a mono-ethnic society. Mm -hmm. That is part of the nationalist but language of the government to turn it into a mono-ethnic. Yeah, yeah. But it isn't. If you talk to any Kuwaiti, any Kuwaiti whose family has been here for a long time, they will tell you they are multi-ethnic. Yeah. So I hear you, uh, but don't confuse it. Most people do agree that it's multi-ethnic, it's not mono-ethnic. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we don't fall into the trap of dividing between Shia and Nawili. Most Kuwaitis are oh, look at every. I think uh, a large part of it plays our interests. Like for example, despite that, a lot of the things uh, like culturally prevalent activities we do in our present day are mainly for guys. Like I, I remember like. As a child, like I would argue with my siblings, I would say I want to, I want to go head out with you. I guess it, I would want to go, and uh, and I would stand by side by side no matter how bad I was. And it's the same with like I would want to go out and see them, like for example, go gun us and the things that are still culturally prevalent here. And it's the same with uh, like I don't know if some of you are. Uh, familiar with the, and going, I guess, trying to catch Jalabiya. Mm -hmm. These are things, and maybe not as much now, but I remember them were an integral part of my childhood growing up here. And despite the fact that I grew up in, uh, like, going to an American school, I still cared about that enough to go and harm my grandparents. And they're like, no, this is just for the boys. And I'm like, no. And I persisted. And I know, like, I'm familiar with a lot of people that, like, now are in their 30s or 40s. Like, they graduated from BBS and they would go to, like, international places and learn about our own music. And how, how, I guess, popular is it that you would find someone who would play a code instead of violin? Exactly, the music lessons, that's another one. Um, that's a looking at our culture differently as a source of empowerment and pride rather than oh it's just something of the past. It's true. This is the and people automatically assume, yeah, I'm speak English, I'm in a t-shirt and jeans, so uh, or mm -hmm. I go to international conferences and put in put on what they call Western business formal and suddenly I forgot my culture. No, I completely disagree. And a lot of, and it goes back to the point that Fahid was saying that a lot of people misunderstand the definition of Kuwaiti culture. Like, I know one of the games that I learned as a kid was Dhamma, and it's essentially an Indian version of like checkers or chess. And that's something my grandfather taught me. And uh, I know that when I wanted to learn more about the, the Gulf Wars, I went straight to my grandparents instead of trusting textbooks that were written by 
people who would have probably be biased. And also, yeah, and most probably my grandparents would be biased too. Any direction you would go, they would have a certain bias. But uh, I think it's all about how you see it. And I know that different people have, and I know a lot of my cousins who go to public schools, and despite them being very in touch with the language, wearing the hijab, wearing abaya, and still don't know as much as I know about the culture. Um, and, and just one, uh, another point is that um, we underestimate how prevalent other cultures are to making our own culture. Like, and like uh, everyone said, like Kuwait was like, it got established because it was a trade route. I mean, there were churches and uh, historical artifacts by Al Alexander the Great and the Romans and the Greeks before any of any Saudis or Arabs or anyone came across this land. Mm -hmm. And that interaction, but like that delicate, like I guess, balance between the different cultures of Indian, of uh, I guess. Uh, Latin of different cultures together is what makes us Kuwait and people like there are two sides to it some people say no it's just the Arab and Nomadic culture and some people know it's the integration because like our first currency here was the Rubia yeah. and, and that's a point taken when we want to define what's Kuwait culture <laughs> عن الثقافة وحكيت عن التراث وزي ما شرحت ببساطة بس أنا عايز أقول شيء بسيط الثقافة والتراث هي هوية جزء من هوية أكبر اللي هي هوية المجتمع الكويت على سبيل المثال هوية هوية عربية الكويت دولة عربية الدولة الكويت دولة عربية جزء من المنظومة العربية كلها المنظومة العربية كلها إذا بتمر بحالة ضعف عام هتلاقي الثقافة كلها نزلت مع الضعف العام نفس الشيء التراث يعني الإنسان لما يكون حاسس بهويته وبلد دخل المجتمع الكبير بشكل قوي هو بينمي الثقافه بينمي التراث عايز يظهر العالم كله انا كويتي انا مصري انا كذا عشان المجتمع قوي جدا لما يدل على ذلك المجتمعات الكبيره بره في اوروبا وامريكا وغيرها المجتمعات قويه بينمي على بعض التراث بشكل جيد يعني ما عندوش شيء هو عايز يظهر انا انا من البلد دي نفس الشيء الكويت المجتمع العربي اذا اذا هم هيرجعوا تاني بشكل ما And the interview was with Telfaz 11, the Saudi artistic collective. And I wrote the introduction in what I thought was a very factual way. So I basically said, hailing from a, a country where women can't drive, but they can get a pilot's license, and where cinemas are banned, and yet uh, they are creating a huge YouTube uh, culture there. And the, the guy, I can't remember his name, he's, he's one of the you know, representatives who replied saying, this is uh, Orientalist fetishism. And he didn't know that I wrote it. And I, I said to my colleagues, I said, okay, you, you guys know that like, I love the Gulf, but I don't think I fetishize it. Um, I think I have a fairly realistic idea. And I, I said, do you feel like what I wrote was inappropriate? Because I tried to use facts. Because when you're introducing uh, an interview, what you write is very important to how the person will read it. Um, if I choose certain words, I can manipulate the reader into being biased towards them. So I was very careful not to do that because I wanted my readers to read it from a point of view where they would uh, be introduced to who they are as factual uh, or factually and I wanted them to then read the interview with kind of like, okay, I know who, who they are so now I can make my own decision. And I don't necessarily do that for all of my interviews. Sometimes I want my readers to think from a certain perspective. Uh, for example, with our series of the front, I wanted people to read the interview as a, from an intellectual point of view, that they, they're not just fashion bloggers, they're hugely important for what modern day Khalidji uh, culture is. Um, and when he said that to me, I felt a little bit attacked. Like, okay, you're saying that because I'm Western? But he didn't know I wrote it. So it was quite an interesting kind of uh, situation because I didn't feel like I'd done anything negative or that was stereotypical. I, I think. Uh, making observations isn't necessarily uh, um, fetishizing, but I think a lot of the West do do that, whether you're talking about Middle Eastern culture or even the wider Asian cultures. 
the Western culture does like to fetishize and take the kind of really stereotypical things. Um, and I actually wanted to ask uh, the Polynesians and Arabs here, uh, what do you guys think of using uh, stereotypical symbols um, as part of your cultural identity? Um, and that ranges from both using the camel or something that a Bahraini brand is doing, they're using the, you know, the sunflower seeds. They're using that as a symbol. So what do you guys interpret uh, yourselves? I entered here knowing nothing whatsoever about cultural heritage and then still was surprised by how a lot of us could participate despite our different, I guess, like I'm a law student, someone's a, a, an architect and different, I guess, bases of knowledge, but still could participate. So that was, I guess, back to the moderators. And thank you. I guess. To leave everybody with the idea that, you know, it's important that we don't think about culture as a uh, singular kind of thing, a particular period of history that we need to hold on to, or something that can only be sort of dominated by the state. Um, I think we keep an open attitude toward to cultural integration and cultural adaptation. Uh, we'll be much more receptive to it when we see it, um, and of course, lobby the government to change our education standards, and maybe we'll have a better preservation of uh, a more inclusive kind. because you mentioned culture but the talk is about heritage I'm not saying that but, and, and to me heritage is not about going back to the art, artifact it's about going behind the meaning what is it? it's the resilience it's the simplicity it's the humility it's the hard work